love their hearts. Yay, it's filming Friday, and um, I'm so happy that you're back in the studio with me again today. And um, if you are new to our channel, um, my name is Katarina Delio. Um, everybody calls me Kat, and I am a professional mixed media artist, and I'm represented by a gallery in Fort Collins, Colorado. Um, and if you're new, we want to thank you in advance of your subscriptions, your very kind comments, um, your thoughtful thumbs up, and for sharing our information. Um, our channel is just about offering um, inspiration and um, trying to inspire people to create more and uh, knowing that that flows in your life um, in lots of other ways. And today, um, since we are all at home and all experiencing this together, this pandemic, um, I came up with uh, something that is very meditative to do and anyone can do it. Um, and I have lots of different techniques. We're going to be painting papers to use in all kinds of work. You can use it in your art journal. You can use it in your assemblage. You can use them in uh, all of your paintings, your mixed media paintings. So it's really versatile. It's great to do. It's meditative. And I think you're going to like it. So we're going to get started right now. Okay, so I have lots of fun projects to work on today. Lots of different techniques and different with different papers. And I think you're gonna like this. Creating uh, painted papers puts you into that meditative flow. And, and you, you can call it in the zone, you can call it being in touch with your muse, um, whatever you wanna say. It, it's great for when you have an artist block or you feel like you've lost your mojo. I mean, people describe it in lots of different ways. But, um, but today I'm gonna share with you something that's super easy to do and really fun. And the first one is texture. And then we're gonna come back to these um, one at a time. Okay, so I've got cornstarch on my hands and I'm going to put my gloves on because this is going to be pretty messy. And um, I don't know about where you live, but where I live, it's really hard to get gloves these days. And so I am using them over and over and I'm being really careful about that. So uh, when you've used it one way, obviously, then you can turn it around to the other hand so that now what this side was is now this side and you get more wear out of your gloves this way. Um, so, and you need to be using gloves when you're using lots of paint um, because um, I know it's non-toxic, but still you want to limit your, your use of it. Okay, so what I did was I thought it would be fun to come up with a project that I had already painted papers and uh, to try to match those. And I got pretty close with this one. You can almost not even see it in some spots um, of the page. And textured papers, Okay, the, the trick about textured papers is that you don't want to waste your paint. You want to build up the layers, and this is highly textured. I hope you can see the texture on it. It's got little ridges and valleys and mountains. Um, is building that up, but still allowing the background to come through, because what's the point if you can't see the background paint, right? It just doesn't make any sense. So I've got a couple of examples. This one, um, we're going to, we're going to, continue to work this way. I'm going to share with you how I did it. Now this one is a, a lighter background. This one I mixed paints to get this background color. So I mixed ultramarine blue and I mixed um, raw umber together and um, Titan buff. And I'm using all golden paints today and what I want to tell you is um, you can you can go on my link and all the things that I talk about, including cotty paper. There's a link there for cotty paper. You just push the little thing that says show more. Sometimes there's a little arrow down or whatever, but you'll be able to find all the links for everything for Amazon to get the things that I'm using. Um, okay, so starting here. Um, so this was just plain ultramarine. So you can see the difference between mixing the colors. And while there's nothing wrong with this rock, paint color, uh, I went back and I, I uh, gave a color wash to it to get to this like browner color on here. Uh, so I'm going to show, show you how to do that. And the first way is using what I call my smooth technique. So we're going to start right there with this blank piece of paper. And um, we're going to mix ultramarine 
and um, raw umber together. And for my, my plate, I'm using just a plastic sleeve that I cut one piece so then I can flip it over and use the other piece of it. And then I've got two more um, plates that I can use. And I taped it to my uh, freezer paper so that it won't move around because that's really annoying, right? <laughs> to have your plate moving. The other thing that's really great about making your own papers is that it's an opportunity for you to use up your scrap paper, your plain scraps, and to use up your old bottles of paint and your dead brushes. This is a really fun thing to do. No agenda, we're just gonna have fun. It's a great stress buster and don't we need that right now? Okay, so another reason to make these papers is that you get to use up all these old bits, old scrap papers, old paint, old paint in the jar, old brushes, which I save and re reuse because, hey, you know, you've got to, uh, you've got to get the very last bits out of there. And um, it's just, it's just so important to use up all of your supplies. Okay, and then, um, my gloves just had ripped and so we had to put on a new pair of gloves. So um, I guess four times is too much for the gloves. So, so we're gonna just do it once. All right, so now I'm just taking my um, paper, uh, which is just watercolor paper. And, um, on, and this is my plate. The plate I'm using is just a plastic sleeve, which is a big friend in the studio, I think. Um, and then I'm just going to use this um, watercolor paper as uh, to spread the paint, to smear it, which is a definite technical art term. Now, what I really like to use is um, a fake credit card. Now, real credit cards don't have the bend and give that the fake ones do that come in the mail. You know, they want you to get their credit card. But see how yummy it spreads? But if you don't have that, you can use this watercolor paper. It will work, and as it dries and it gets harder, it'll, it'll, it's much easier to use. I also like it because you can get a great texture. You can use your happy scissors and cut it, or you can deckle it and then you can get wonderful textures and I'll share that with you too. But first of all, we're just going to get paint on here. We're just going to get it covered and show you what that looks like. So I'm, I've mixed uh, the uh, raw umber. I've taken that out of the tube and used my nasty uh, brush, <laughs> my dead brush. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to swipe down and darken it so that it's not quite so bright. Now you can go the same way, you can go different ways. I mean, just experiment with, you know, what you like. And if you want to put more blue, you can put more blue, but now basically we're going to start working our texture. Okay, so now, if there are areas that are still too bright, you can always go back and color wash them. But I think now is a really good opportunity for us to come back and with our paint, um, you know, you can make small dots with your paintbrush, which after you start doing this a little bit, you really start getting into the zone or into that creative flow. Um, so you can start by putting um, dots down and I know that um, for some people this would be just like, oh, just kill me now. They couldn't do it. For other people, they would really love doing it. Um, and then you can move on to doing other dots. Okay, to get the larger dots, you can use regular old bubble wrap. And check it out. Make sure that you've got some dots there to set down. And remember, it's building up layers and layers. So it takes time. And um, one of the coolest dots I found came from this lid top. I just love this. I think my husband was eating some kind of nuts or something. It was nuts, wasn't it? Anyway, um, so this makes uh, really cool <laughs> um, little dots. And don't worry if it gets kind of smushed or, you know, um, you know, it doesn't come out exactly the way you want it to, that they all didn't form. 
don't freak out over that, okay? There's no agenda. It doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, perfectionism causes a, a form of paralysis and it'll keep you going over and over and doing things over and over until, you know, I mean, you're, you're stuck in Groundhog Day if you're looking for perfection. So fill some of them in. Don't fill some of them in. And um, just allow the texture to just keep um, building up with different um, dots. And you can go over with the uh, brush and put in your own dots. Okay, one of the best reasons for doing this is that, you know, these papers, they make up a, a signature your own signature in your artwork that speaks your language, nobody else's. You're not using someone else's papers. Um, and you just keep, you know, working it and building it up, letting it dry. And then if you want to go back, um, you can. Now, there's a lot of different techniques you can use. You could go back and just spread it out. You can wash it. and then come back with your rag and lift it off and just keep building up and building up and building up. And then of course the very last thing you can do is to use a toothbrush and to do splatters. And that's how we made this where we just kept going on, on top of it over and over. And then we color washed it on top of that. So let me show you that. So just take a little bit of the raw umber and then we color washed it. Okay, and then just lift it. So it gets even more subtle with that. So you just keep building it up, building it up, building up until you get a wonderful texture. Okay, so this paper is the smooth technique and uh, I, I had this piece left over just like that little tiny one, wherever that got off to. Um, <laughs> and I wanted to uh, make it again for you in the studio. So that's what this piece is all about. I really, this is one of my favorite pieces that I ever made. And um, it has a lot of wonderful texture, but it's all smooth. And that is because I used the, uh, the watercolor paper and, uh, and I used the smooth technique on it and then I went back and painted and then did color washes. So I have a couple of pieces that are already worked up because I knew you were coming, so I got busy yesterday. And so this is just the raw umber and the paper, that this paper is mixed media paper that I'm using. Now you can use a variety of papers. I like having lots of plain scrap in the studio and using lots of different things because you know how I am. I'll say, well, I wonder what it would look like on watercolor paper. I wonder what it would look like on brown paper. And so I just go off and play with it. Okay, so to get to where we are here is we did it the same way, except we used um, a pink color wash over the top. So from here, to here, pink and white. We actually, I think it was pink and um, Titan Buff, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and if it's too bright, you can mix some of the brown in there. You could put white in there if you want. I'm pretty sure that we used um, the Quinacridone red but we might have used pyrrole, but it doesn't really matter. What matters is that brown and blue and brown and pink, just, they love each other, okay? So if you remember that in the studio there, they just, they really care for one another, okay? And they, they play so well together. And um, so you just wanna add the color wash on top and then let that dry and then put in your dots. Now these are handmade and I used um, Titan Buff to do it. Okay, so large dots. And um, like I said, it's just really fun and yummy to do. Once you get started, you wanna keep doing it and keep doing it <laughs> because it, it feels really good to just create with no no reason other than to just make a really pretty paper. Okay, and then there are tiny little dots here. I don't know if you can see these, but, and then they have like little brown squares around them. They're way in the background. 
So I just did these little tiny dots. Okay. And now on the side, this, these little squiggle marks are all in um, raw umber. And, um, and I just did marks. Now you're not gonna be able to see it because it's not light enough. So I just realized I'm gonna have to come back. And where's my credit card? Here we go. Okay. I think I might have a little bit of pink left. And again, I'm just building up layer after layer after layer. That's, that's what you have to do. But hey, you've got all kinds of time in the studio right now, right? Um, you can do it, you know, whatever you want. Um, they're just squiggles. They're just little, little tiny shapes. They're just, yeah, squiggles. Um, doodling with a paintbrush, basically. And then you just let that dry and then you come back and do a color wash over that. Okay, so let's see, these they're sort of dry, so I'm gonna try to go over it with quinacridone. Okay, so I'm just gone over it. And this I should have let dry a little bit more, but we just want it to go into the background. That's all you're doing is you're just pushing it all back into the background. And, um, and then if you want to go over the squiggles with dark color, then you can. Or you could, I mean, if this is my paper, then what I'm going to do is think about definitely going back over them or making dots now because the pink is starting to show up and then go back and make lines. So you're just, you're actually making this wonderful just painted paper. And um, you can do all kinds of things to enhance them. You can come back with the dark raw umber and go around the little dot. You can just use all kinds of ordinary plain things in the studio. Okay, and then go back and do um, color washes again but you have to let it dry. <laughs> so we're gonna do that. Okay, so you can just go back and fill in um, using up what paint you have left on your, on your plate or just dabbing it actually into the tube and then pulling it out and just creating your own little dots wherever you want them to be. Um, and then going back over and doing another color wash. Um, and then I went back and I added uh, the raw umber again, and I'm going to let that completely dry. And then what I would do is go back with a light color wash on top of that with more Titan Buff. And there you go. Nice and smooth. Okay, the next technique is using interference. Now, I don't know if you've ever used interference paint before, but Golden makes a fine interference. I have it in several different colors and I really love it. I do tone it down a bit. And um, so what I started with was dark with just black paper. Now, you have to have it on something dark. It's not really gonna show up on anything light. On, on a white color, it's just not gonna make a mark for you. Um, but a little bit of it popping through is really cool. I think it looks really great. And I just love the way this technique came out. So I'm gonna share that with you today. It's super easy. And you just need a little piece of plastic from a plastic tablecloth or uh, placemat or whatever. I just cut those guys up. And, um, and then the other technique I used was just the, with this um, screening, which is super simple and easy to use. You can get this anywhere. So look all around you for wonderful um, things to create texture with. So interference, um, it's, uh, it's just a wonderful um, kind of yummy shimmery paint. See, and if you look on here, you can't, you really can't even see it. But once you put it down here, this is going to mix with some of that red, I think, a little bit. 
Okay, you put it down here and you can see it right away. It's pretty cool. And like I said, it's in my link, so in case you want to get it. Um, so I want to make sure that I've got enough down so that you can see, but I want to leave enough black too so that there's that wonderful contrast. Okay, so just checking to see how it's going to look. And like I said, I don't want it to be super clear. I just want it to be like a hint. It's just going to give you a nice texture. And you're just gonna marry the two colors. Now on this one, I used a little bit of Titan Buff for the background but I just wanted to show you, I mean, yes, you can do that. You can add the, the uh, Titan buff with your um, interference and to get that look. But I just wanted to share with you how beautiful it, it looks together. And it's just a, a yummy look, don't you think? I know this is running long, but I wanted to give you guys lots of things to play with in the studio um, until we meet again. Um, so this is um, just plain scrapbooking paper, okay? And, um, and I love the way it turns out when you make it into a painted paper. Now the whole object of this is that you can still see that there are dots underneath there, which is really important. So the first thing we're gonna do is use that smooth technique with my um, fake credit card, my favorite tool today and we're just going to smear it on here spread it out i won't do the whole thing but just part of it so you can see okay which gives it a, a really nice color don't you think and then we're going to drop that back in water and um and then the next thing i did was i used my trusty nut top <laughs> you're going to look all over in the kitchen i know for different tops and things and um and just made the dots and then went over in a dark color with just this wonderful yummy stuff there we go okay so play around with your scrapbooking papers and see what you can do with them and uh, have lots of fun with it well we're at chow for now and i had a lot of fun painting papers in the studio and I wanted to come up with something that you could do and play with and find really meditative. You can use it over and over in lots of different areas in your work. And you can use up all those old bits because that's really important right now. I know a lot of people are out of work and you know, it, art supplies are expensive. So I'm um, using them judiciously, but having lots of fun, having no agenda and just playing. So so try interference, try making your own handmade made papers and just play with it. And I send you all my love and um, take good care of yourselves. Stay home and sending you my love. Ciao for now.